Wow. Who would have thought we'd end up here? We now live in a world where the Dallas Fuel are world champions. What an existence they've had. From meme team full of hopeless fans to the absolute pinnacle of professional Overwatch. It's been a wild ride for lifelong Dallas fans, and in today's video I'd like to spend some time appreciating how far they've come. For starters, Friday November 4th will now be known as a day in history that Overwatch Esports will never forget. The confetti rained down as the Dallas Fuel made history in the first year of a new era of Overwatch Esports. A fantastic season was capped off by a dominant upper bracket playoff run and one of the most clutch performances in finals history. And it came through one of the greatest games of all time, and easily the closest finals we've had up until this point, and it had literally everything you'd ever want. A crazy back and forth between two very talented rosters, the new heroes getting a lot of love, an exciting crowd environment, really good storylines on both sides, and a super close back and forth affair. And a lot of what we saw is all in thanks to the efforts of the Dallas Fuel, who finally made due on their five-year promise. But how exactly did the Dallas Fuel get here? How about we do a bit of a recap on this team's long and brutal road to get to this triumphant moment. And for people who only became fans of the league recently, you might learn something. So sit back and relax as I tell you the tale of the Dallas Fuel. So the journey all started when it was announced that Envy had secured a spot in the Overwatch League for the inaugural season in 2018. They secured the Dallas Fuel franchise and instantly generated a lot of hype thanks to the incredible roster they assembled. At their core, this team was full of legends of the game. You had winners from the biggest tournament aside from the Overwatch League in Apex. You had Taimu, Mickey, Chip Zion, Harry Hook, and Coco. And along with that, they had famous players Effect, Siegel, and XQC. This was a power roster that was supposed to be a grand finals contender right off the rip. But once the regular season got underway, it quickly became apparent the competition was a lot greater than anticipated. One of the title favorites was starting to lose their confidence, and the coaching made lots of questionable decisions on top of it. The team imploded before we even hit the halfway mark of the year. Players were stressed out. Players wanted to quit. We had people starting at positions they normally would not be at. Nobody was reliable on this team, and there was so much drama. Between the unhappiness and the coaching, Dallas absolutely crumbled at the heel. A team with championship aspirations could barely win any games at all. They were out of the playoffs very early on and only managed to finish 10th place out of 12 teams. And if it weren't for a miracle run in the stage 4 playoffs, the season would have had literally zero bright spots. But because they did finish on a high note, there was some hope again in the world of Dallas. Their new head coach, Arrow, was doing good as a late season pickup up until that point, and there were some good pieces to maybe build around finally. And things genuinely did start off okay for the Fuel as they posted a solid record through one half of 2019. They even capped it off with a stage playoff appearance and a really successful homestand. So in theory, there was nowhere to go but up, right? Right? Well, so we thought, because before we knew it, drama was once again in the air over in Dallas. Player burnout and questionable lineup choices absolutely destroyed what they had going for them. The first half of 2019 saw them be a potential playoff team after posting a 9-6 record. But in the second half, they won just once out of 14 attempts and only mustered a pathetic 12 map wins in that time frame. The lack of veteran leadership, flexibility, and poor coaching reared its ugly head as Dallas finished at a measly 15th place in the overall standings and missed the playoffs for a second consecutive year. The legendary Western core that was supposed to be competing for titles accomplished absolutely nothing. Dallas found itself being one of the least respected franchises in the Overwatch League at this point in time. They were looking completely and utterly hopeless, and Dallas fans couldn't help but wonder when the pain would actually stop. And the Fuel's management recognized this. They knew they couldn't afford to keep on failing, so they decided to make some big-time changes. In a wild turn of results, they decided to add more Korean firepower for the first time ever. 
They traded away longtime player OG in hopes that Decay would carry them, as well as Gamsu and Crimzo for some veteran presence and consistency. And at first, it seemed like Dallas was maybe generating some hype. They didn't start out too hot and they were a bit up and down, but Decay firmly established himself as an elite superstar playmaker as Dallas started to win some exciting matches. He'd put everybody on his back time after time to the point where they were even dominating against their Texas rivals and taking the shock in their primes mind you, to a map 5. Dallas fans finally felt like they had their guy. Everything was going according to plan. But of course, drama came back to the forefront yet again, as it usually seems to do with this franchise, because as it turned out, their superstar Decay was unhappy behind the scenes. He was causing drama during scrims, he refused to practice a lot, it was bothering the players, so management finally had enough of him, and they decided to release him from the team, even though he was the one guy that really gave them a chance. And as a result, their record paid dearly for it. And despite getting a free ride to the playoffs thanks to COVID, they still lost early to their former teammate Decay on the Washington Justice. Without Decay, they just didn't have any star power. They were so inconsistent across the board, and they didn't really have anybody that stood out on their team. And at this point, after failing for a third straight year, it seemed like the Dallas Fuel were a cursed franchise. Having three disastrous seasons back to back to back made them one of the least respected teams in all of the league. And it's obvious that management knew that this just couldn't keep on going. They were one of the weakest franchises in league history in terms of accomplishments, and they just couldn't afford to be patient or cautious any longer. An all-or-nothing approach had to happen. And when it was announced that the Paris Eternal decided to shop their core, consisting of Sparkle and Hanbin among others, Dallas got their wallets ready. They surrounded Doha with many of the teammates he used to play with back in the day. The Element Mystic slash Paris Eternal core had finally formed, alongside Fearless as well. With all those guys together, plus Coach Rutch leading the way, anything seemed possible. They had the stars and the synergy to maybe do some great things. And I mean, we really saw that get stretched to its limit with Dallas in 2021. In spite of having no dedicated hitscan on their roster, they quickly became a very solid team. It started off kind of slow, but then they hit the light switch and they ran with it as they ended up winning their first ever tournament. Fearless and Sparkle were truly on top of the world. Fearless for his insane Winston, and Sparkle for proving to everybody around him that he could indeed play a really mean Tracer. The redemption story was finally getting kicked into gear. The Fuel didn't manage to get any other first place finishes, but they did net a second during the June Joust and a third in the Summer Showdown. They were a title contender and one of the best overall teams in the league. They had superstars, role stars, and MVP candidates and a serious chance to win the whole league. Fearless Hanbin, Sparkle, and Fielder were all considered to be top players at their positions. Their flexibility was maybe questioned a bit throughout the year, but this Fuel team always had an answer. And while they ended up falling short of their goal in the playoffs, they did get awfully close. All they really needed was a few upgrades, that was painfully obvious. Which gets us to the present, the 2022 season, the one that transformed Dallas into a true juggernaut. It was obvious that this team needed an upgrade or two and they'd be a real threat. The big things to address were main support and hit scan. And Dallas went out and they got two basically what I'd consider to be life-changing signings. Their main support Jexe was good, but not great, so they took a chance on a rookie like Chio for some needed versatility and explosiveness at the main support position. And then they followed up with Edison and Gurio to finally have some actual hit scans on the team. And there was maybe some questions on if Edison could be an X Factor, but but it was still better than nothing. It's better than what they had. They made the appropriate upgrades and seemed destined to go places. And that's kind of what we got, right? Dallas didn't have a single bad stage. They literally lost four games the whole regular season. And of those stages, they went 5-1, 4-2, 6-0, then 5-1 again. And what's great about Dallas is they seemed to get better over time, which showed that they really were talented and very well coached. 
We saw it firsthand in the kickoff clash when Fearless ended up taking a step back so Hanbin could shine in a Zarya meta, and it ultimately led to a silver medal in the first tournament. All the guys from last year were doing their thing again. Hanbin, Sparkle, Fielder, they looked great, but then you add in Chio, who was making big waves as a rookie, as well as Edison, who looked solid on the Reaper. There's maybe some questions that came about afterwards thanks to a confusing situation at Tank in Hitscan during the second stage, but Dallas refused to stay down, which is evidence of how far they've come in their history. The teams of old would have thrown in the towel over the littlest adversity, but this team was different. They had the synergy, the brains, and the confidence to get through it. This team was motivated to get through their previous shortcomings. It was championship or bust. Who knew what the future was going to hold? It had to be now, as this roster might not last another season together. They knew that the only way they were going to win it all is if they started to prove themselves right now. So they locked in and put up the most dominant second half of a season out of any team in the league. And Hanbin was at the forefront of it yet again, as he showcased he was MVP level not only on Zarya, but also Junker Queen. Behind his play, Dallas literally rolled through the second half of this year. They got super hot and propelled themselves right into the title favorite category. And they started off by absolutely blasting everybody to a first place summer showdown finish and eventually the number one seed in the entire league. Dallas were in a serious groove now. So many MVP and Roll Star candidates were emerging, and unlike at the beginning of last year where they kind of used up all their energy at the beginning, they were saving it towards the end of the season when it truly mattered. They were absolutely stacked at support and tank, and they were looking real good. But a guy that maybe started to get under the radar types of attention was Edison. His sojourn play was slowly starting to draw some eyes. Was Edison finally realizing his potential that he was unable to reach on the Atlanta Reign? It seemed like it, but there was still one more test to truly decide if he was a difference maker that was going to live up to his name. The playoffs. The one place Dallas haven't really shined that much in their long and sad history. Could they even find success in a Kiriko meta with no Hanbin? Up until that point, the team wasn't really that dominant with him on the bench. There was no guarantee that the fuel could adjust. But thankfully for them, the Winston Kiriko rush worked in perfect unison with their hive mind aggressive playstyle. Their guys understood how to get the most out of the comp more than anybody else. W and playing as a unit is this team's specialty. But also, it seemed like they were pretty good at just changing the style and the pace of play whenever they needed to. They could dictate the game how they wanted to, so most of the time it felt like they were in control. And as a result, the upper bracket was an actual breeze. And that's saying something because they played some tough opponents. The Spark got top four in the playoffs. The Outlaws got top three, and while they flopped, so were pretty good most of that year, and none of those guys really made them sweat. It was a quick and simple three-game journey to the Grand Finals. Let's be honest, Fearless acted like he never left. It was just like the good old days, and he had some help from a top-tier Kiriko and Fielder, but more than anything else, we gotta talk about Edison as he absolutely stepped up in the hugest way possible out of anyone else on the roster. He really started to heat up in the playoffs with some of the most clutch and dominant sojourn performances of the entire year. Him, Fearless, and Fielder were setting the tone for what was possible in this meta, and their efforts ultimately paid off as Dallas got to their first ever Grand Finals. But the job wasn't done yet. There was still one more obstacle in their way. A hot shock team fresh off a crazy loser's bracket run was looking mighty scary in their own right, and Dallas found this out the hard way very quickly, as Proper and the Shock seemed very ready for some revenge. If Dallas wanted to break the curse, the Shock were going to make them earn this. They were looking for title number three. Proper was playing out of his mind, and it gave the fuel all they could handle. I mean, seriously, every time Dallas threw a punch, this dude would return in suit. This was a serious back and forth affair, and the main theme came through Edison versus Proper, as these two sojourns kept trading big time plays all night long. However, Edison and Dallas were on the back foot. The Shock were the ones to take a lead two different times in this series, and down 3 2, it was now going to be all or nothing for the fuel. Were they going to choke again and waste another year of this amazing core? Well, 
This time, Edison had something to say about it. A guy who was mostly expected to just fill in the missing holes and be more of a secondary playmaker ended up being the true difference maker that Dallas desperately needed. There wasn't going to be any Hanbin heroics or bailouts this time, and Edison knew this. Of all people on his team, he played with the most urgency. He recognized that if he wanted his team to win, he was going to have to trade blow for blow with proper on one of the most impactful heroes in the entire game, and that was kind of putting a lot of pressure on him, I'd say. He had largely not lived up to his potential up until this point, but he was tired of the haters, and he made that very clear with his actions. And while he wasn't the starter or anything, he did taste the finals last year, and it's clear that he just wanted to finish the job. So he went out there and delivered dagger after dagger on the final two maps to give Dallas that extra push to overcome proper. He looked like an elite superstar on the sojourn. I'd even go as far as saying that Edison put on one of the greatest finals performances in Overwatch history. Now, of course, Proper did the same, but we all remember what the winners did more often than not. From the guy who lost his job on the Atlanta Reign to the most important piece, arguably, in a championship run. Now, that is what I call a redemption arc. The potential that people saw in this guy three years ago finally came to its pinnacle. And when it mattered the most on map 7, he played like a monster. He found a few pivotal picks at the end end of that game, which led to the shock being disarranged in an overtime situation. They were down with the numbers, and I think those big kills are ultimately the thing that let Dallas go quickly to recontest the bot and close out the series right there and then. There were a lot of moments throughout this series where Dallas felt unsure of themselves. Nobody had really pushed them up until that point, and they were making mistakes because of it. But whenever it truly mattered, whenever their backs were against the wall, they had an answer, and that's the thing they deserve the most credit for. I talk big about Edison and his clutchness and composure, but everybody did their part. Players both old and new put on a clinic. The final two maps of that series were dominant on their end, so props to Dallas for playing big when it counted. They never ever panicked, even when going down 3-2. They corrected the wrongs of this franchise's past, let's just call it how it is. And here at the start of a new era, Dallas finally delivered on their promise, and as overtime ticked away and Fearless took the final charge, the Fuel were crowned the true kings of the world for the first time. This one night made up for all of the pain and suffering that Dallas had to go through for so many years. Last year was great and all, it was a great step in the right direction, but what this team really needed to correct the wrongs of the past was a championship. Say what you will about Dallas fans, but they are easily some of the most loyal and passionate fans that this game has to offer. They were promised something big half a decade ago, and they've been waiting very patiently while dealing with a lot of painful moments. There's no more, let's just wait until next year. No more pain and suffering, no more tears, and no more empty promises. The curse was finally lifted. The Dallas Fuel won the Grand Finals in epic fashion, as them and the Shock gave us the greatest playoff Grand Finals we have ever witnessed. Credit has to go where it's due to both sides for putting up this incredible performance, and it's worth praising the Shock for coming this far as a young team, and it's worth noting they will not be going anywhere anytime soon with that core, but this is just truly the Fuel's time to shine. And it's not just because they won, it's due to all of the amazing stories that met their climax. I mentioned Edison before in fulfilling his potential, but it goes way beyond him. You have Sparkle and Hanbin and some of those other Element Mystic guys for finally living up to the hype that was placed on them when they were champions on Element Mystic back in the day. But most importantly, the Fearless Redemption arc has finally been completed. He has joined his former team in the Shanghai Dragons as champions of the world. For those who only became fans of the league recently, you may not know that Fearless had a wild journey to get to this moment. It all started in the inaugural season when he joined the worst team in the league, aka the Shanghai Dragons. He was signed in hopes that he could help turn their season around, but unfortunately, there was way too much of a mess within that franchise, and his efforts were in vain as Shanghai went on to post a 0-40 record. Yeah, you heard me right. They didn't win a single game in 40 attempts. It's one of the worst years in league history, and after this embarrassment, 
Fearless didn't even get another chance at the league. He had to prove himself again in contenders. He had to grind his way all the way back to the top in the minor leagues, which he eventually did where he ended up rejoining the Shanghai Dragons in 2020. And this is where he would end up really having an insane year that put him on the map. And he ended up winning three tournaments, which is pretty great for him. However, when it mattered the most, he just wasn't good enough to help his team in the playoffs. But since he did pay off his debt to the Dragons and help them become relevant, he was ready to play with his Elm Mystic brethren on the Dallas Fuel, where he would continue to be a hero and be one of the best players in the world, while simultaneously going through even more adversity, right? Dallas were good in 2021, but they did miss the grand finals. And then you have this year, where people started questioning how good he actually was after Hanbin took his starting job. It's been so up and down for this guy his whole career, even when he has been successful. But when it mattered the most, he had the opportunity to prove himself in the grand finals. And he delivered big time, even earning finals MVP for his efforts. Now that is how you end a redemption arc. From Owen 40 and consistently having to prove his worth to grand finals champion and a finals MVP. That is a huge cap off on what has been a magnificent career to follow. Watching Fearless cry tears of joy after all he's gone through is just so amazing. It's an emotional moment for him and the Dallas Fuel, and even general fans of this league. So many firsts happened all in this one year, and it's largely thanks to the Dallas Fuel and what they were able to accomplish. Without them, none of this is possible. A big thank you goes out to Dallas for what they accomplished. I'm very proud of them. But that, my friends, is the amazing recap of how the Dallas Fuel went from a meme to the dream. It's a very unique story with a lot of interesting sub-stories found within it. It's so special for so many different reasons, and it's something we'll be talking about for years to come. Congrats to the Dallas Fuel and a job well done and their first ever championship banner. You can rest easy now. The promise has finally been delivered.